in this installment of Unpacked. And then he's like, oh my gosh, oh, really little, oh, really little, you know? And then I asked him, what happened? What happened to us? And then he said, uh, and then they find my son. So he says my son had like sand in his eyes and then he, he was just looking up. He was not blinking or anything. Mm. So he said to me, Mama, I want to see. Mm. I'm like, you want to see what? It's like it's dark. Mm. That's the day they realized that he was blind. a horrific car accident that left her and her son scarred and damaged for life. She's here to share her story. Let's unpack. All that IV Sibito remembers is leaving Polokwane a day after her wedding day and waking up in the hospital a few days later. The events that transpired for this fashion graduate were not the happy ever after that she had imagined. This is her story. Let's unpack. Ivy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Take us back to that day of this accident. What was happening at the time? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it happened a day after my wedding, mm. which was on the 14th of September. So, uh, And how long ago was that? I think seven years now. Mm. Yes. Mm. So um, I got married that day. And did I enjoy the day? No, I didn't mm. enjoy none of it. So anything that could go wrong went wrong. Mm. And then I remember at night, uh, after the reception, I got hit by like a rock, a big rock. I called it a night and then I went to go sleep. So in the morning, me and my husband decided, so we, we spoke about him leaving that mm. day. And and where was he leaving from? He was leaving from Polokwane to uh, Pretoria. We stayed in Pretoria. Okay. So home for me is Polokwane. Mm. So during the day, we spoke about uh, him leaving and he had an interview, actually. He had an interview on Monday. Mm. So, uh, and then later on, he said, my husband said to me, no, I need you to come with me. I mm -hmm. need you and, and, and your son to come with me back to Pretoria. And I was like, I, I can't do that. And my uncle on my wedding day said to me, please don't travel. Mm. You can only start traveling on Wednesday. I don't know why, mm. but that's what he said to me. And that stuck to me. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to go anyway. And then uh, later in the afternoon, he said, um, I need to talk to your mom and tell uh, your mom that I need to leave with you guys. As in your husband? Yes, my husband said, I'm going to talk to your, your, your mother mm. and then I'm going to take you guys, you and your son, to Pretoria. Okay, and then I, I didn't want to, but I was like, you know what, it's fine. And his reason was, because I married you. I mean, why do you have to stay here? And then my mom, my mom said, ah, it's fine, you guys can go, but please leave uh, the son. So he's like, no, I want the both of you, mm. okay? We're like, okay, this is my husband, why not? So we got into the car. This was around nine. So in the car, it was me, him, my son, my dog, uh, his cousin, and my friend. So uh, we left, and then I remember we passed an engine garage, and then I bought a pie for everyone, and then I said a little prayer, and then I slept because I was so exhausted. Mm. So actually, everybody in the car slept except him. Mm. So... And I remember his cousin saying, after an hour, wake me up so I can help you drive. Mm. And then this was still in Pulukwane. So we got into the N1. And then by Nail Plaza, just after Nail Plaza, there's a sharp uh, curve there. So he says it was a tire burst. Mm. And we fell off a ditch, like off a bridge. There's a little bridge there. We fell that side. And so in the car, it spit me, my son, my dog, and the the cousin. Mm. So my friend and him were left in the car. Mm. So he got hit by a, a belt, the, the buckle of a belt. Mm. That, yeah, so that's the only thing that happened to him. And then he said he collapsed for like two seconds, Yana, and then um, ran to the nearest um, uh, toll gate, which was the nail plaza. So when he left, he says there was no one in the car except my friend. Mm. So he wanted to look for everyone, but he, he couldn't find us. And remember, it was, it was a night. So he left, and then when he left, so I crawled up, mm. right? And I know that I crawled up because my pants, 
like on the buttocks, there was like nothing. There was mm. no fabric there. So apparently I, I, I crawled up and then, so he was still gone. So I'm hitchhiking. I'm, I don't know why, but I, I don't even remember doing that. And then, so I, I saw lights, mm. right? And then there was like a strong wind that was just blowing towards me. And then he said to me, no, he said to the guys, because he came with some guys. And then he's like, oh my gosh, oh, will you tell? Oh, will you tell? You know, and then I asked him, what happened? What happened to us? And then he said, uh, and then I fell down and then I collapsed. So they had to take it. So now my son is still missing, right? Mm. So the that car, the fire, the tow car, yes. right? It came. So now it wants to, to tow the car out. Mm. And my son is still somewhere there. Mm. So when the, tow, when the tow car goes down, he can see that. And then he can see my son. Mm. And then he goes and blocks the car. And then they find my son. So he says my son had like sand in his eyes. And then he, he was just looking up. He was not blinking or anything. Mm. And then they took him, they took me, they took everyone. So in the ambulance, I was with my friend. Mm. So the, the paramedics kept on telling my friend, don't let her sleep, you know. Don't let her sleep. She's losing mm. a lot of blood and just keep her awake. Say the things that she knows or that she'll recognize. So my friend was busy trying to talk mm. to me. And she's injured as well. She broke a leg. And then, so I was in a different... Um, ambulance uh, from my son. My son was somewhere else. Mm. So they took us to the hospital and then I don't remember all of that. So that's when they called my parents and so I had family in Mokopani. Mm. So they came first. That was like my uncle and my aunt. So they came to, to the scene. They came to the hospital. So they, they were all waiting for um, my mom and dad mm. to arrive. So when they got there, they stitched me and I don't remember None of that. Mm. All I remember was trying to wake up and him saying, Ah, baby, Who, who's him? Oh, my husband saying, mm. Ah, baby, really, really, really. And then somebody saying, shh, shh, shh. I don't know who that was. And then uh, from there, nobody spoke about accident, nothing, mm. you know. And every time I asked the nurses, What's wrong with me? Where am I? They were like, No, it's, okay. it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Don't worry. I'm like, Yes, but like, where am I? Mm. And then nobody told me. So there was this other, other nurse. Uh, she was so calm with with everything, and she wanted to tell me bit by bit because nobody told me anything. Mm. And she was just say, she, she she just said to me, "We like a going on aka and you know, and then hope mm. a you know, you're in good hands. We're gonna take care of you." And then the first question is, "Where's my dog? Where's my son?" Mm. You know, and then she said, "Don't worry about that now." worry about getting better. I'm like, but I can't see. So I would do this for me to open my eyes. So I was on, an, I was on a, a, a nappy mm. for, for everything. So I remember this one time, I think it was after two weeks. Yeah, I could walk a bit, but my mm. body was still in uh, pain and everything. So I went to the mirror, right? There was a mirror in the bathroom. And that's when, oh, because... It was the first time I saw myself. Mm. The last time I saw myself was I was a I was a, a beautiful woman getting married yesterday, mm. right? Right now I uh, I look horrible. I I don't recognize myself. I've mm. never seen myself with a cheese cup. They shaved everything off. Mm. And when I was growing up, I've always wanted to be on TV. I always wanted. I'm mean, a fashion designer. I I wanted you know the glam. I wanted everything. And when I looked at myself that day. Mm. It all went away. Mm. You know, I mm. just, I, I couldn't see a future. I couldn't see myself in the next week. Mm. I, I just, I just wrote myself off, mm. you know, because I was like, there's no way I can look like this. You know, mm. I kept on asking God questions. Why didn't you hurt my leg? Mm. Why, why my face, you know? And I went back. That nurse was like really talking to me and trying to, I've left me and tell me it's going to be okay. But I'm like, my face is ruined, you know. And this whole time, because you're saying this was about two weeks later. Yes. Where was your understanding of where your son was? Nothing. Nobody told me anything. Even your husband at the time? Yes. He, nobody. Even my parents, when they came to see me, and nobody told me anything. So there's one day, two nurses came and they're like, did you see your son? Go, I see you. I see you. And they were new. Hmm. I, I, it was the first time I saw them. I see you. My son is here. 
what happened? You know? And then I remember my, mm, uh, my parents came to visit me later on. I was like, guys, why didn't you tell me my son is here? I want to go see my son. And then I tried uh, waking up. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Like, everything was just painful. I remember I had, like, it was just bad. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, and then my, my face started swelling up, mm -hmm. right? And then my mom was like, nah, man, she's not getting better. Like, why, why is she uh, getting swollen and stuff? So that lady also said, the, the, the nurse that I told mm -hmm. you about. So the nurse is like, no, you know, I need to check what's happening, mm -hmm. you know. And then I had stitches. So mm -hmm. this was like two weeks after that. So I had stitches. So she unstitched me mm -hmm. and then she found sand, rocks, glasses, like anything you can find in the bushes, you know. Wow. So she cleaned me up, she cleaned me up, she cleaned me up. And she went against uh, the doctor's thingies. And she cleaned me up. And then she put bandage on. So I started getting healed by a bandage. And then she said to me, you know, you are going to be okay, you know. Mm. And it's God who made me realize that there's something in your, in your skin, in your head. Mm. You know, I'm taking all of these things off. You're going to be. And I was I always told her, I want to be on TV. Oh, my gosh, I want to be, you know, I want to be on a magazine. And I was telling her, mm. you know. And she's like, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I'm like, but I look like this, you mm. know? And it was actually the first time I, I've seen myself without hair. Mm. And then, so I was like, okay, now I'm ready to see my son. I just wanna go see my son. So I remember I, they took me with a wheelchair. I, so my, that nurse, the same nurse, took me with a wheelchair. And then my parents were also coming in to go see my son. Mm. So we met at the corridor, we went to the ICU. I, I was there for like probably two seconds. Mm. I saw him. He didn't look like my son. And he couldn't even blink. I, that was just horrific. Seeing him like that was horrific. And I ran out. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to go out. And I've never seen him since then. I chose not to. Mm. Because what I saw scarred me, you know. Because I'm thinking he's three. He was not, and I started blaming my 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 ex husband. I was like, why why did you force for us to leave? It was better if I was the only one who's gonna get, get hurt, not my son. Mm. But I didn't know how extreme it was by then. Mm. So went back to the ward, and then they were treating me. They were treating me. So now all the stress is coming about my son, not mm. me. I even forgot that I got hurt. So I'm asking questions. And no one is telling me anything. Mm. And then time went by. Time went by. I got discharged. Right. Mm. So when I got discharged, now I have to stay in Mukopane. I mm. can't go back to Bulogane because that's far. I have to stay in Bulogane because my son was still in hospital. So I was like, you know what, I want to go see him again. What did they tell you had happened to him? They just said you, you, you got into an accident, he got injured. That's all they said. Nobody they told me the details They didn't yet. tell you the details? Nobody. Okay. So I remember, um, I was like, okay, mama, I need to go see him now. I think mm. I'm ready. I went in, and then he was—he looked better, right? Mm. And then I asked the doctors, I'm like, what is wrong with my son, mm. right? And they're like, no, he broke a leg. That's all they said. I'm like, okay. And then, so he said to me, mama, I want to see. Mm. I'm like, you want to see what? It's like, it's dark. Mm. That's the day they realized that he was blind. Mm. The doctors didn't see that he was blind, and... His brain was swelling up, so now he has uh, brain damage. I found out the day that I went to go see my son. Mm. That was probably like over a month, you know. Did your husband know what was happening with your no. son? Though? No. How come he didn't get the information as well? He, I think he was traumatized. Let me say he mm. didn't want to. He didn't want to ask a lot because mm. I remember they said he fought with the security guards because he had to go home and he's like, I, I want to sleep here. Mm. You know, so he was sleeping in the corridors and I think he was not in the right space at the time right, by then. So we found out informations about my son mm. almost every day. And I was like, how don't you see that he's blind? And what broke my heart was when he said, mommy, I want to see. Mm. What, what do you say as a mother, you know? And then I was like, I don't think I can do this. And then he was on a traction. He broke his um, his leg and his left side got uh, hit by a stroke. Mm. He was blind and then he had brain damage, right? So with me, it's just like head injury. Nothing much. I don't know anything. Mm. And if my scar is healing, the, the nurses probably think, ah, she's getting better. Mm. I don't know 
the bad side yet. Mm. And I'm discharged by then. Okay, then um, my son is still in hospital. So now my dad starts uh, practicing the whole thing about like making him feel his cause. Like, what if he's blind forever? Mm. You know. Mm. Now my dad goes there with his toys and he makes he makes him feel the toys and stuff. And I was like, I can't do this. You know, I'm, I'm I got married yesterday. Uh, right now, my head is is something I don't know. I look mm. horrible. My son is in ICU. I don't know what's happening, you know? Mm. And I remember I got home. I'm like, Mama, what's what's going on? Am I dreaming? Mm. Is this true? And then my mom was like, unfortunately, this is true. And um, your husband is here. I'm here. Your dad is here. And your whole family is here. And we're going to do our best to make sure your son is out and he's okay. So wh- wh- when, the, uh, when did the doctors tell you what the extent of your injuries were? It was a different doctor because now I, I then I went, okay, then um, my husband was back in Pretoria, right? Mm. So now he calls and says, no, the mother calls and says, my husband's mother calls and says, um, he's not coping, you know. Mm. He wants to see you. He wants you to heal in front of him and stuff. So I had to go that side. So you went to Pretoria? Yes, and my son was still in hospital. So I was like, okay, I went to Pretoria. So when I got to Pretoria, my husband was just tiptoeing around me, you mm. know, because he doesn't know what's happening. He doesn't know how to treat me. So this one day I woke up in the morning and then my eyes were like red, mm. like red liquid was coming out. So it, I, th- I think that was blood. So we rushed to the doctor, got to the doctor, and the doctor was like, and then we explained everything. And I still had bandages on. And so when we got to the doctor, the doctor said, nah, man, you need x-rays. Send me to another doctor, I got x-rays. Mm. And then we took it back to him and he said, everything is okay, mm. right? Mm. So fine. And then I was healing, I was healing. I went to go to my GP just for dressings and stuff. So now my focus is on my son. Excuse me. I am fine. I feel mm. like I'm fine. I'm in pain, but the focus is there. Yeah, he yes. is. Yeah. So my son gets discharged and he can't see still. And then I go back home and then seeing him like that. When you say home, where's home? Oh, I go back to Polokwane. Yes. And then when I get there, now he's a baby. Put him back on the nappy. He has to crawl. He can't do anything for himself anymore. And um, I still don't understand what the doctors had explained to you what the extent of his injuries are. Because you're yes. saying no, it's, he's now a baby. What, is, what does that mean? Yes, so we hadn't gotten information yet. Okay. Yes. Okay. So they just said, they just said, oh no, he, he broke his leg. Those are the things that they told us. But yes. later on, we're going to find out what's really okay. wrong with Okay, I understand. Yes. So, the, uh, so he was in preschool. Mm. Right. So one of his, te- I explained uh, what happened to him, to the principal and he, his teacher. So what his teacher said, bring him to school. I will try do therapy on him. Mm. Uh, therapy is like, yeah, I'm going to take him swimming and stuff. So he, he, that lady actually mothered my son, mm. you know. And if we, when the learners were in class, she would be by the pool. She would, you know. Mm. Mm. And... It didn't last long, you know, because the teacher had to leave and stuff, so we took my son. So now I am a mother to a son that's brain damaged. I don't know yet. We Mm. don't know what's happening. And now his vision is coming back now, Mm. bits by bits, bits by bits. So... And how how did you find out his vision is coming back? What did he say He said, this one day, this one time, during the day, he said to me, I see light, I see light, you know? Mm. And then he said to me, Jesus loves me, mommy. Wow. You know, and I was like, okay, what can you see? I can see you, but it was still blurry, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my parents came back from work, and then I told my parents, he can see, he can see. But my dad said to me, D- don't rush it, you know, don't don't rush it. Let's just uh, wait for this process to happen by itself. So I had to go back to Pretoria. Mm-hmm. So I go back to Pretoria. I'm still sick. I can't walk properly. I I uh, you know, but my pain. Is not as bad yet. And were you going with your son or without? No, him? my son is still in Pulukwane. Yes. So when I get to Pretoria, uh, my mother-in-law was uh, taking care of me. Mm. So I was staying with my husband and my mother-in-law. So my mother-in-law was taking care of me, taking care of me. So I'm ge- gradually getting better, mm. right? And my husband says, I want a child. And I can't walk. I can't, I, I'm not in the right space to be pregnant, in a sense. Did, and you, ex, did you say why? No. Why specifically? I'm then? married to you. Yes. Yes. So now, 
after I came back to Pretoria for the second time, mm. that's when all the depression came. Mm. I, I was confused. It felt like I was in a hole, mm. right? And every time I wanted to speak to my husband, he would shut me out. Don't talk about that day. Why do you want to talk about that day? You're bringing trauma to me. I don't want to talk about it. So now I'm in Pretoria. My parents and family are in Polokwane. Mm. I have nobody to talk to. Mm. I don't, I want to talk. I, I want to say something, but mm. I don't know what I, what I want to say. And he didn't let me say mm. anything. Mm. Every time we left, I had to wear a cap. I had to wear a fringe. I had to hide myself. Because mm. that thing was on my, like my sky is literally on my face. Mm. And I remember I became so suicidal. I became so depressed. I became, and he was literally looking at me going down a hole, you know. I remember this one day I told him, I'm like, I need therapy. I need I need some sort of help. What is going on in my brain right now? Mm. I cannot control it. I don't mm. know what's going on. Mm. I remember I tried committing suicide probably over 50 times. Mm. I I did not see tomorrow. I did not mm. see anything and I got married the year that I graduated. Uh, I did my fashion designing. I graduated and my dreams just went down the drain. I didn't, I wasn't optimistic about anything. What was the main reason um, that, you know, and uh, get specific, that mm -hmm. you were feeling so depressed to the point that you wanted to take your own life? Because I was 23 by then. Mm. I am married mm. and my son is away from me. Mm. My son can't see properly. I am with a man who does not let me talk about what happened. Mm. And you're the person who forced me to get into that car. Mm. And right now, I feel I feel like you're shutting me out. You're blaming me mm. for, for feeling what I'm feeling, mm. right? And what I was feeling was everything just didn't look bright for me. I yes. didn't even see tomorrow, not even the next five years or whatever. And you want a child. Mm. How? Uh, emotionally. So, so we understand mm -hmm. your first child, it was it, your son. It yes, wasn't it your was son, son with, yes. from a previous relationship. Yes. So he was wanting you guys to have a child together. You've yes. just gotten married. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and then we conceived. Man, that was hell. Mm. I, From the first day, I cried every day. I And you know, I wanted to understand him. I wanted mm. to protect him and understand him. And sometimes I'd just go and cry in the shower mm. because he can't hear me, you know? Mm. And then he would always say, why are you so depressed? You're, so, you're always crying, you know? I'm like, I'm not okay. Mm. I'm not mm. okay. Like, you know how I feel about my face. He knew that, mm. you know? And now it's like, yeah, but we'll get over it. Mm. And then I remember asking him, I said, I want to go for therapy. Mm. He said, no. He mm -hmm. didn't give me a reason. He said, no, yeah. I don't have time for that. I'm not, why should we talk to people you don't know about your life, yeah. right? So now I'm pregnant. So... And at this time, where's your son? And my son is at home. Him? Yeah. My, so now my dad said, I'm going to step in. Mm. My daughter is not okay. Mm. And I was not, emo like emotionally, I was numb. Mm. I didn't feel anything. Mm. All I did was just cry. So I'm pregnant and he became a different person. My mm. husband became a different person. I did not know that guy anymore, mm. you know. And I tried I tried doing everything I could to cover myself so he can maybe see me the same way, mm. you know, because it felt, in the house, it felt so cold. It felt like, dude, I didn't marry you with this girl, mm. you know. And I remember I started drinking. I started drinking a lot. And, uh, and then I got pregnant that I stopped drinking, right. Mm. But... I still tried taking my life when I was pregnant, mm. you know. I remember this was one day I slept at a garage. All I wanted to do was take a walk. I wanted to leave the house. I just mm. wanted to, to talk to a stranger, tell, tell a stranger how I feel, mm. you know. I went to a garage and then I called him. I'm like, I'm not okay, you know. I'm not okay and I feel like taking my life. Please come help me. He's like, you want, you're looking for attention. I don't have time for this. He went to go party with his friends. And then I remember I was at a garage and then some lady saw me crying. 
mind you, I'm pregnant. Mm. This lady saw me cry. She's like, what's wrong? I, I'm like, I, I don't know. I just need a hug. Mm. You know, I, I, I don't know what to say to you. Mm. But what I'm feeling inside is I need, I'm going to take my life. Mm. I need someone to hold my hands, you know. And it was a couple because the, the man was in the garage. And then the lady's like, can we just take this girl home? Mm. I did not even think about my safety at mm. that point. Mm. And then I left with them, they gave me tea, I spoke to them. I don't even know their names. I don't mm. even remember how they look. Mm. And then in the morning they took me back to the garage. He was not there, he was not looking for me. Mm. I walked back home. When I got home, he was drunk. And he became like that now. He didn't want to be mm. in the house anymore. Mm. He didn't care about how I felt. Mm. And time went by, I gave birth mm. to my daughter. He lost his job. And he lost his job. My husband lost his job before I gave birth. Mm. And then now we had to stay at my mom's house in Pulukwane mm. with him. And then we stayed at my mom's house just for like, I think it was two to three months. Mm. I gave birth and then he got a job. Mm. He went back to Pretoria. I stayed in Pulukwane. And then after three weeks, he got us a house and then we came back. Mm. So now it's me, him, and the helper and my daughter. So now my, my son is still in Pulukwane. And your daughter is the newborn. Yes. Yes. My son is still in Pulukwane with my parents. And I used to call every day. I used to, like, want to know, is he going to be okay? Mind you, we still don't know what's happening with my son. Mm. We're thinking he's okay. I mean, he got a broken leg. Mm. He's fine. But now, this side got hit by a stroke. So it's like this, mm. right? So now I have a child. I'm not happy. Mm. I am not happy. Nothing about giving birth was joy. Nothing, mm. you know. Mm. And I remember... Was your husband happy because yes, this is he what was. he wanted? Yes, yes, he was. And then I remember the last, last day, the last day I left that house. Um, my, my daughter was like four months, mm. right? And then it was a, it was a Friday. I, I can't... I, I will never forget. And mind you, I'm not eating. Mm. I, I, I'm not eating, I'm not drinking water, I'm not doing anything. All I do is just sleep. Mm. The helper is literally mothering my, my daughter. So I call him, I'm like, that, that feeling is here again. Mm. You know, the feeling is here, I need you. And he said to me, I'm not coming home. I'm not going to come home. I'm sick and tired of you. I'm sick and tired of, of this, whatever you're trying to do. Why are you trying to take your life? I'm like, I don't want to. It's a feeling I'm feeling. Mm. I mm. need you to help me. Let's at least pray together. I, I just want this feeling to go away. And so there was a neighbor. I called the neighbor. I'm like, please help me. So the neighbor used to pray with me. I'm like, mm. please help me because that thing is back and I don't know how I feel about it. Mm. And then the neighbor came. By the time he came, I had... I drank something that I was not mm. supposed to drink and my daughter was just there and I was just, I, I was lifeless, man. You know, I was living, but... It felt empty. I felt so empty and cold. Mm. I couldn't mm. be a mother. I don't want to lie. Mm. And he came and then he came home because the, the neighbor called my husband. He's like, you need to come home because your wife uh, is trying to take a life. He's like, ah, dude, I'm tired of this girl. Came back home. And I don't remember. I went blank. I can't remember him mm. coming home and stuff. So that night I slept at McDonald's. Uh, he went out partying. And I was talking to a security guard. I, I found therapy in talking to strangers, you know. And I was in pain. I was in pain physically mm. and emotionally and mentally. And I remember I asked the security guard, I'm like, when you look at me, what do you see? Mm. You know. And that man said, I see a beautiful woman. It, nothing was beautiful, trust me. Mm. I, I, when I looked at myself in the mirror, I couldn't see a, a, a human being. Mm. It was just dark. I couldn't see my future. I couldn't see anything. So in the morning, I went back home. And then he called me. He's like, baby, let's, let's talk things through. You don't have to do this. He was soft mm. that day. You don't have to do this. Um, I'm here for you and whatever. Kanti, he called my parents. He said, come, come help me. Mm. You know, called my parents, called his parents, right? And when they got there, it was like a young meeting. And I remember I was, I was sleeping. So when they were walking in, I was cutting myself. Mm. And I didn't know that they were coming, you know? Mm. And then next thing, my, my mom is there. is like, baby, what's happening? I broke down. I'm like, mommy, I don't know what's going on, mm. you know? Everything is just too much for me. I, I'm, I'm confused. I, I, mm. I'm not getting answers. I don't know what's happening, you know. Mm. 
And then we sat down, we spoke, we spoke. And then one of his aunts said, uh, we need to take her to a psychologist, mm. you know. Mm. Um, we need to get help for her. And I remember my mother-in-law was there and my ex-husband were there. Mm. And then they left. So he was like, okay, fine. She can go get help and come back, mm. you know. And then my mother-in-law was there with him. So they went to the garage. When they came back, he said, no, actually, I don't want this. You know, mm. I don't want this anymore. Please take her. Please, I, I can't. I, mm. I don't know how to do this. I don't want this anymore. You know, when he said that, something in me went good. I just felt like, can it get any worse? Mm. Mm. You, you don't want me because I want to tell you how I feel, how mm. this whole thing makes me feel. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? I, I need to understand what's going on here. Am I going home for good mm. or am I getting help? I was desperate for help, mm. you know? And I remember the meeting ended and then we left. So when we left, no, before we left, he said, please pack, every, my husband said, please pack everything, mm. you know? So my mom was just packing everything that belonged to me and the baby. And then on my way to uh, Pulukwani, on our way to Pulukwani, I remember in the car, I said, God, do it again. I Meaning want another what? accident. Oh. Please, and this time, take me. You know, mm. my daughter was crying. And that made me worse because I'm like, I can't even be there for you. Mm. And, and the thing is, I wanted to be a fighter. I wanted mm. to fight this feeling so much that all I wanted was at least professional help or something. I'll be mm. okay, you know. Went back to Bulugwani. It's me, my dad, and my daughter. Went back to Bulugwani. Get to Bulugwani. Now my son is there. Mm. You know, now everything is worse. And this one day, I don't remember that day. Mm. I don't remember anything. So my mom said I started running, right? I ran out of the house. I ran out. I, I just ran out. So she called one of her friends. It's like, please come help me. So they were chasing me with the car. Mm. I don't remember all of that. And they got me. They took me to a psychologist, mm. right? When you got to the psychologist, it was my, me and my mom and my dad. So the psychologist said I wanted to see the parents, my parents mm. first. They went in and they spoke to her, and the night was my turn. So when I got in, I remember that day. I looked at her, and she said, oh, "How are you? Now? What are you?" I'm like, "I just want to die. Can mm. you kill me? Is it okay?" Uh. And she's like, "You know what? I'm admitting her." And then they took me to a psychiatric hospital. Mm. So. I don't remember going to the psychiatric hospital. I don't remember mm. anything. I remember a person, I think it was a nurse, trying to fill, it, fill in a form. Mm. So they said, what's your name? I said, death. Your surname, death. Mm. What do you wish to experience? Death. Everything was death in the paper. Mm. And so they had put me in a separate room. I was mm. alone. I couldn't eat. Every time they gave me tablets, I, I would pretend as if I'm swallowing and I wouldn't swallow. I would throw them away. And I was alone. I was in a... I was in a, a separate room. So my parents would just come and just look at me. Mm -hmm. Like the visiting hours, they would just come and literally look at me. So I still had my phone with me. So I remember my ex-husband sending me a message and say, send me your address, I want to send you divorce papers. Wow. And I was like, I'm in hospital. You can't, you can't do that. You can't be that bad, mm -hmm. you know. And I just took the phone and showed my mom and I don't know what my mom did, but my doctor took my phone. So at night, you, you were supposed to see a psychologist and a psychiatrist. Mm. And for the first week, I did not see anybody. They would come to me. I wouldn't mm. say a word to them. And I remember this one time I went to go bath, and then there's this string in the shower. Mm. I thought it was there for, I don't know what, Hunty's an alarm. So yes. I choked myself with that. I tried taking my life only... I was asking for help, so they mm. came in. So they're like, you know what, she's a danger to herself. Let's move her to a ward that has people in it. So I went to the ward, and I was like with three other ladies. Mm. But I was still fighting for my life. I That feeling, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what that feeling is, but you are not in control of yourself. Mm. You, I was mm. not in control of how I feel. I was not in control. I was not even hungry. I couldn't get hungry. Mm. So... I lost so much weight. I lost so much weight. And then, so now I don't know. The last thing he said was, I want to send you divorce because they took my phone. I'm still wearing my, my wedding ring, mm. you know. So now I'm in hospital. I don't know what I'm here for. I don't know whether to heal from the accident mm. or the trauma or 
me getting a divorce after this, you know? Mm. Now there's something else on top of that. And I, I, I was stubborn. I was stubborn about getting help. Mm. I remember... Do you mean in terms of them suggesting things that you need to be doing and you not wanting to do them? No, no, no. I just wanted help. I was mm. desperate for help. I needed help from everybody. Mm. Even, like, another patient, I would say, please help me, mm. you know? Because it, it was it like, it's like you could, feel, you could touch the, the feeling that I was feeling. It, it was like a monster that came and just told me everything mm. bad and mm. I am nothing, mm. I, you're not beautiful. And I don't know, there's one, one time I went into the doctor's office. I'm like, I think I'm ready. You know, I think I'm ready to peel off the bandages. I'm ready to, to go through my pain and understand mm. what's wrong with me and why I'm here, mm. you know. And she spoke to me, she told me, listen, I need you to understand that your husband doesn't love you. Mm. I need you to put that in your head and understand it. Mm. You can't live here thinking that, oh no, he loves me, he's just going through a lot. This here is a situation where he had to block out what he's feeling mm. and be there for you, you understand? Mm. And now I had to understand that that man that I got married to is not my friend, mm. he doesn't like me, and he, he made me feel like, I don't like you. You don't look like the girl I married. So now my son is at home. My head is between home, home in Polokwane. My, son is, my, my head is between that and the hospital, mm. you know. And, how, and how long were you in the hospital for? In a month. Okay. The psychiatric hospital? Yes. Yes, in a, uh, it was a month. And I remember I told my parents, please stop coming. Mm. You know, let me fight this by myself because you are triggers. When you come in, I'm thinking a lot. I just want to focus on mm. me. So I told my mom, please bring my makeup bag, mm. you know. And my mom was like, makeup bag? So they had to go through a makeup bag, see if I don't have anything that I could hurt myself with. Mm. And I had told myself that, you know what, Ivy, I think it's time. You know, mm. you have kids now and you need to understand that this is your new reality. Mm. Was that easy? No. Mm. But it was me trying to. So I went through the doctors and I started smiling again. I remember the first day I did my face, when I came into the doctor's office, she's like, what? And she took pictures of me. She sent pictures home. She's like, I'm seeing change in you. Mm. And then we went through the whole process, went through the whole process. Now I have to go home. I'm discharged. According what to was happening with your, your son's recovery while you were still in the hospital before you got so discharged? So now my son now goes to a, a physiotherapist. Yes. And uh, yeah, it was just a physio. Yes. He was going for physio only. And when we look at him, he looked okay. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. So now I'm also looking okay. And now it's time for me to go home. Right. Okay. No, they, and then the psychiatrist put me on antidepressants, mm. right? So I relied on those things. They made me sleep. They made, And I think that's the other reason why I could stand up and say I'm ready. Mm. Because at night, they would inject me for me to sleep, mm. you know? So I, I wouldn't go through a night crying and mm. doing all these things. So I went out. So I remember the day where I got discharged, I went out and I asked, the first thing I, I asked for was my phone. Mm. I found a lot of messages. I did not read them. Mm. I told myself, I'm not going to read them. I called him. No, he saw me online. My husband saw me online on mm. WhatsApp. And he called me. He's like, hi, baby. How are you doing? I, I was so cold, you know. Mm. And remember, I, I begged this guy to stay with me. Mm. I begged him to love me again. I begged him to, to have compassion, man. Just, mm. just, I'll be okay. Mm. Fall, you know. And I came out and I was like, yeah, I'm out. Where are the papers? You know, it's like, no, baby, we don't have to do this. We can actually mm. talk about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for whatever you want, right? Go back home. So now when I'm at home, I start getting headaches, right? Mm. I get head like headache, like pounding headaches. Mm. And my son is not okay. Mm. In what way? My Like, his development's changed, mm. you understand? And his vision is back, but he's limping, mm. he's... So, and then we did not claim for, mm. for Road Exxon Fund because I was not allowed to. Why were you not allowed Because my husband said, it's going to get him tr into trouble. I'm not allowed to do that. It's digging up a lot of things. It's going to take us back. Don't do it. I mean, I'm here for you. Was he drinking before driving? The day of the accident, he had something to drink. Is that why he didn't want you yes. to go to UIF? Yes. Also, oh, not UIF as in RAF, yes. Yeah, Road Extreme okay. Fund. Yes. And then, so now we can't claim, right? Mm. And 
So this other uncle of mine is like, uh, I heard you were in an accident. Uh, how's everything? Uh, did you claim? I'm like, no. I even thought, I, I even forgot about it, you know. Mm. So my, my uncle evoked everything. Mm. You understand? That's when we've discovered how damaged we are. Mm. Right? And, okay, something that changed about me after the accident, before knowing by the doctors what's wrong with me, I, my depression was too much. Mm. Like there were days where I could not control how I feel. Mm. And I would literally try to fight that feeling, but it couldn't happen. I was so mm. depressed, mm. you know. And so now when they evoked everything, now we have to go through doctors, proper doctors and stuff. That's when I realized that my son's brain, half of my son's brain is dead. Mm. Like it's damaged, damaged, damaged. And mm. I tried to, now he was seven. I have to take him to school for special needs but i took him before before knowing that yes. i took him to a normal school yes <laughs> that was the bad decision he couldn't cope mm. academically my son is damaged mm. he can never be okay he will never learn things like other kids do mm. and i remember every time my dad used to pick him up he would play with doves you know mm. Like, it's a whole school full of kids. You want to play with doves. And I'm like, nah, something is not right there, mm. you know? Then when we started going through doctors, they told me that um, his brain damaged and his brain is dead. Mm. There's nothing they can do to bring it back. This is what's going to happen. Uh, socially, he's going to be okay, but academically, don't stress your child, you know? So now I had to start looking for a special school. So... In Pulukwadi, there's nothing that caters for that. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you know. We looked around because his case is different. He's okay, but not okay, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. He's not severe as in like, because most special schools are handicapped and all of these things. And then with him, half of his brain works, half doesn't, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Academically doesn't at all. Mm -hmm. So now it took me back. I have to shift and put myself in a position where now you are mothering a child that's not normal, mm. right? He was not born like that. I had to prepare myself and look at him in the next 10 years. Where, where was he developmentally? So if you're saying he's seven, mm -hmm. was he a little bit behind in terms of his development? Not even a little bit. Mm. Like, if he was seven, you would take away four years from mm. that seven, mm. you know? So now my grandmother said, you know what? I'm going to homeschool this. We're looking for a school. In the meantime, let me just teach him the, ba mm. uh, the basics and stuff. So my grand took him mm. for a year. Uh, he took him to Ramatlala, uh, right? So my grand is trying to teach my son all of this. But at the same time, now I'm starting to be sick. In what way? Headaches, mm. right? I had bad headaches. I had uh, back pain, right? All these other years, I did not have any problem. Mm. So now I'm sick. So now every day I'm sick. Uh, there's blood coming out of my eyes and sometimes I'll take out like thorns from my scar, you know. And now the only problem I'm experiencing is my back pain and my headaches, mm. right? So now I start going to different doctors. What is wrong with me? Mm. So they take scans and everything. And the last doctor that saw me diagnosed me with um, frontal lobe syndrome. And what does that mean? It means the front part of your brain was, it got injured a bit, mm. right? So I don't, my brain does not work like normal people, mm. right? I, like when it comes to my memory, my speech, my, like everyday uh, things mm. are a bit shaky. So she put me on a chronic medication just so I can be a normal person. So now that you knew and understood what the damage was, where are you today with all of that and also your son's development? Okay, right now I'm still trying to accept myself and I'm still trying to fight this thing, this frontal lobe thing, because it's difficult. I don't want to lie to you. It's difficult mm. living with this condition because one day I wake up and I feel like death. Mm. You know, the suicides still come. It's just that now I'm smarter. You know, mm. I know what to do. I lock myself in, up in the room and I cry and I don't want anyone to talk to me. Mm. And the people around me know that, you know. Mm. And Are you still on antidepressants? 
I stop and go because I don't want to fully rely on it. Mm. So, in, but, but to answer your question, I am, right? Mm. So now I live with frontal lobe syndrome and my son is brain damaged. And I'm trying to go through life understanding that that's my new norm. Mm. I'm still looking for a school for my son. Uh, my son is homeschooled by my parents, by me, my gran. Mm. And what breaks my heart is he remembers this the, the day. I don't know mm. how, mm. because he said, uh, mommy, is that why I'm not normal? Mm. Is that why um, other kids bully me? Mm. Is that why you have a scar on your face? I remember the blue car, you know? Mm. I remember the wheels getting off. And he's only saying this now. And then... When it comes to depression, I still suffer from that. I still suffer from that, but I'm, I'm, I'm slowly gaining my confidence back. Mm. Uh, I, I take pictures now because that was the biggest thing ever. But even now, people taking pictures of me, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable yet. Mm. I'm not comfortable. I'm self-conscious. I, you know, I just... Ugh. But mm. I'm, I'm way better than I was last year. And when it comes to a lot of healing... It actually became better this year. I don't want to lie. This year was the year where I said, you're actually becoming stronger, Mama. Mm. And everything looks better, even though it's hard in terms of my son and what he's going to be. Am I going to get a school for him? Mm. Am I going to get help from him? What kind of a person is he going to be? Mm. Uh, will I ever get um, married again? Well, like, is there anybody who's going to understand my condition, mm. you know? Um, and speaking of marriage, when did your divorce get finalized from your ex-husband? 2016. Did you attempt to to fix things between the two of you? I mean, e after the time where you came out of the hospital? Uh, just once. Mm. Just once. And after that, he just didn't want me and my mm. problems, you know. And Do you still blame him for the accident? Yeah. Because he insisted on you guys going or because he was drinking prior to the accident? Because he insisted on us going. Mm. And I remember this year, I had a sharp pain, like a very bad one. I texted him. Mm. I said, I'm in so much pain and I hate you. Mm. He didn't reply. And this year, May, I got so sick. I got so, so sick that I went to a specialist and they found liquid around my brain. Mm. It's just a lot. It keeps going on and on and on. When it comes to head injury, it doesn't heal as fast as you wanted to mm, heal. Mm. And now we're discovering that now I have liquid around my brain. So now currently I'm on a treatment to try and drain out the liquid. I, I'm just winging it. But in terms mm. of confidence, I'm way better than I was. Mm. And I, I actually talk to people about confidence these days. Um, it's healing for myself, it's therapy for myself, but mm. I'm actually helping people that have scars and, mm. you know, because a lot of people always ask me, what's that on your face? Mm. It used to offend me. Now it's like, no, I was, I was, I was in a car accident, but I'm okay now, you know? Mm. And people are like, how do you hide it? How do you do this? I'm like, it's there. Mm. And it's the new me. And I love the fact that my kids know the scarred me. Mm. You know, I think that's what gives me peace because they don't know the old me, and I don't remember how I used to look. What What is your biggest key takeaway from this accident and everything that you've been through? Mental health is actually a big thing, mm. right? It's the biggest killer in the world. And I just wish that people were so open to just listen. Mm -hmm. All you Sometimes just listen to someone, you know? Mm. All they need is for you to just listen, even if you don't say anything. Mm. Because I don't want to lie. I still am shocked that I'm here, mm. you understand? With where I was and how I tried taking my life, I don't know how I'm still here. Mm. And it clearly shows that I have to be here, you mm. know? Mm. And my my story is something that still makes me cry, right? Yeah. But I always ask myself, why am I still here? Why is my confidence coming back? Why, why, you know? Mm. So it means something, I don't know, maybe... It means you're meant to be here. Yes, yeah. but all I can say is the, the pain, mm. I still feel that. 
when it's summer, I have to wear hats. When it's winter, I have to wear beanies. Because mm. when it's cold, I get uh, pain. And then mm. when it's hot, you know. And that's just my life. That's mm. what I live. I, I Everybody around me know that they have to have painkillers when they're with Ivy. Because I'm always going to be in pain. And my son now... Uh, is doing okay in terms of like his social life. Mm. Academically, we're still looking for school. We're not finding anything. Mm. And one thing that I can say is I wish there was a lot of uh, psychiatric hospitals mm. that were accommodating people that don't have money. Because and that's, that's a very, very big thing um, yes. that, that has to be dealt with yes. uh, nationally. We know that mental health is not getting the attention that it deserves yes. in the in the health space. But I thank you so much, Ivy, for coming through, thank for you. sharing your story of, of how, you know, in such a short space of time, your life can change completely. Mm -hmm. You're still affected, I can see. Mm -hmm. I hope you reach a point where you're able to forgive your ex-husband. And I hope you reach a point where, you know, your son get to find his feet and get surrounded by the people and support and resources that he needs to develop and grow at, at, at an optimum level. So thank you so much for coming to talk thank to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hashtag unpacked with Rilebukhile. What are your thoughts on today's discussion? It is absolutely tragic what can happen on the road. And I guess that's the risk that we take by being on the roads as often as we are traveling. But your life really can change and can be affected, sometimes even for the worse, after such an incident. Thank you so much to all of you for watching. You know we love to hear from you, so make sure you contact us on the socials or hit us up on an email as well. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. He beat me up so badly that I couldn't walk. He threatened my children. Mm. He threatened my mom that he would kill them. I never hid the abuse. Mm. And there was tears, there was blood, and there was a gun. Thank you so much for watching Unpacked with Rileb Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.